Jay Vine almost became a paraplegic, and Steph Crass suffered a double pneumothorax and several broken vertebrae. They were just two of the cyclists who crashed on the descent of the Alto della Oleta in the Itzulia 2024, with serious health consequences that will keep them paralysed for the next few months. But perhaps some of you have not heard that the same fall involved the then leader of the race, former skier Primoz Roglic, Remco Evenepoel, and especially our beloved Danish anchovy, Jonas Vingegaard. For it is he who has attracted all the attention of the press, he who the spotlight has fallen upon, which is always slightly sickening in this kind of situation. There have been many opinions about it, many idiots talking at times when they shouldn't, saying things that were distasteful. But in fact, the only important thing is if we like cycling, we want all these athletes to recover as soon as possible and to get well from their injuries. Let's analyse the data, the words and the consequences of what happened in this multi-rider fall. Crashes have always happened in the history of cycling, and it's something that has not changed in recent years, and it can occur in different ways. Training, like Eganito Bernal crashing into a bus, reconnoitering a time trial course, like the White Kenyan in the Criterium Dauphiné, a stupid spectator pulling out an Opi Omi sign and then throwing half of the peloton to the ground, or even with fatal results for the athletes like the culvert that took out Bjorg Lombrecht in the Tour of Poland, or the very fast descent of the Abula Pass that Gino Maida couldn't overcome in the Tour de Suisse less than a year ago. No one who loves cycling wants this to happen. Indeed, only the media wants it to happen to attract more viewers to their trashy websites or their ridiculous newspaper covers or their meme-filled social networks for teenagers or 30-somethings still living in the basement of their parents' house. But these things happen. Crashes are an intrinsic risk of cycling. But in the Basque country, they happen just a little too often. The Uskadi Cyclist Organization in charge of this disaster is a repeat offender. It happened with former Olympic champion Greg Van Avermet, who lost a Classica San Sebastian after being knocked down by a race-associated bike. It happened with Caio Rural's Spanish cyclist Sergio Padilla. And it happened only two years ago when the Dutch rider Milan Varda suffered serious injuries that almost ended his life after falling down an embankment on the descent of the Nachitua. We are not going to recreate the images of the Alea to fall at this point because you will have already seen it on hundreds of channels. It seems evident, as local cyclist Mikel Biscara pointed out, that on that descent, on that particular curve, there were tree roots under the asphalt, and that made the cyclist bikes bounce at high speed. It's also evident that, despite the signs warning of danger, it was not enough. There were large rocks and stones located very close to the road. All the things that happen on this garbage route devised for this edition of the Zulia. There were stages with lots of flat terrain that do nothing to break up a bunch. And then the bunch is funneled into a few very narrow climbs and descents. A peloton of more than a hundred cyclists arriving at those hot and dangerous pinch points. And all because of the obsession that the favourites arrive with a few seconds of difference between them Going into the final stage, the decisive one, are the same as always, the Arate stage, where the monsters of Fratini and Berzin and Zuller or Vingegaard have shined in the past. The same organisation that made a fool of itself by not suspending the stage or allowing just the six riders of the breakaway to compete for the stage victory yesterday. Of course, there was no real apology from the race director, the unreformed macho man Julian Irasso, the same one who claimed that women's cycling was just a fashion, the same one who laughed at Tadej Pogacar saying that if he didn't come to his competition it was out of fear. <laughs> Maybe Poggy wasn't so wrong, eh? Irasso was really nervous yesterday. This time, it wasn't Sergio Padilla crashing. It wasn't Milan Varda having to stay for weeks in a hospital while recovering. This time it was Rogler, abandoning the race to avoid taking more risks and destroying his season. It was Remco, with a broken collarbone, saying goodbye to what could have been his third consecutive Liège and a spectacular duel against Poggy. And especially it was the little dictator of world cycling, 
Jonas Vingegaard suffering a pneumothorax and breaking several ribs and a lung contusion that will keep him in hospital for several days. Many riders can be teased or patted on the back, but the anchovy with the best marital life in all of Denmark is not going to have his balls kicked in and his chances of winning the Tour de France destroyed. In less than three hours, the Visma team had already pulled strings to embarrass the race organization via the Safe Cycling Organization, which is closely linked to ASO, RCS and all the big races on the calendar. Its CEO, the Norwegian Marcus Lerum, commented that Jonas Vingegaard had already warned him about the dangers of this particular descent in January. Note the meticulous preparation that this man and his team perform in pre-season, hopefully to avoid disasters like the one that happened. Safe Cycling reported the situation to Erasso and the Azulia organization, and they duly ignored the suggestion of the main star who had come to the race to compete. Erasso, you have been portrayed as, well, slightly arrogant, shall we say, and it was evident even in the post-race interview. There were far more dangerous, far worse points on the course than the Oleta. It's incredible, but true. And it's also incredible that there are cyclists who are still willing to defend this organisational disaster. Peyo Bilbao, the popular Basque rider of Bahrain Victorious, who Sergio Palamonte affectionately calls Osram because of his physical resemblance to a light bulb, he tried to take the blame away from Irasso and the shitty route. He tried to blame his fellow riders for going too quickly in those sections, unlike him. He already knew the danger of the descent, and he knew how to ride slowly in the peloton. Oh, I'm sure next time Vingegaard will listen to you, Signor Bilbao. But then don't go crying about Maida's death, and then in this situation behave so differently only ten months later. In the same vein, Lillian Calmagen, with some controversial statements, put 80% of the blame on the popular final bottles, and displayed an icon of a test tube full of drugs. That was one of the most enlightening and, at the same time, murky testimonies of recent times. There are also characters who take advantage of these situations to try to gain relevance, such as the already hackneyed ex-cyclist walking meme and president of the Professional Cyclist Association, Adam Hansen. After managing to include a ridiculous chicane at the entrance of the Forest of Aremberg for Paris-Roubaix 2024 that is an embarrassment for the cyclists themselves, he wanted to criticise the organisation of the Zulia, but not for the dangerous quality of the route. Instead, it was for filming the cyclists while they were being treated, because we saw Vingegaard with an oxygen tank, as happened 37 years ago to Stephen Roach in the middle of the Tour de France. Hansen claimed that this was unnecessary and it was morbid, but at no time did we see the cameras get too close or disrespect anyone. This glass generation ridicule was quickly silenced by the Ineos rider's father, Tymon Aronsman. He told him that, as a family member, he would obviously rather see his son as OK if he has an accident than have the images taken off screen and not know what on earth's going on. Oh, Hansen, shut up. The consequences are clear. If this had happened to a Kaya Rural or a simple Gregario on a World Tour team, Irasso would be calmly eating roasts while sending waitresses skipping along for seconds. And the press wouldn't have given any relevance to such a dangerous descent, and the fans would be debating whether the anchovy could make up time on the skier in the first time trial on the final day. But it has happened to three of the world's best cyclists, and all at the same time. Now Poggy immediately becomes the number one candidate to win Liège and the Tour de France. And not only that, all the other races where Vingegaard or Avonapool were going to participate are going to lose an awful lot of their audience from the fans who only admire these big-name cyclists. These are the dangers of making a sport all about the superstars. But because of this, it will take a long time for them to return to an Itzulia. Erasso, resign. Because your face is going to smell like Danish fish for the rest of your life from the beating you just took.